In this step, we'll take a look at how you can duplicate a completed material and then make some tweaks to it if you want to. So in this case, we could also just create a new material, but if you've spent a lot of time getting a material just the way you want it, and you want a copy of it to just make some small changes to, this would be the way to go. So we're going to create another metallic style material for our detailing on the pieces of table here. So we'll see how this turns out, and we're gonna use our brass material as a starting point for it. So what I'm gonna do is just select it, so just left click on it over here in the browser, and then to copy it, I'm going to go to edit. You'll see that there's duplicate here and we need to do the whole shading network. But I'm going to hang on for a second because I haven't yet cleared my workspace and it would get messy if I forgot to do that. So let's just click on that to clear the workspace, select our brass material, edit, duplicate, and we'll also copy the shading network. There we go. So here we are then with our duplicated material. We're not going to call it M underscore brass. We'll call it M underscore... I don't know, what would you have end table piece? Uh, let's call it copper. So we could at this stage now make changes to the color, roughness, whatever we want. But because I'm a lazy little chuff, what I'm going to do instead is go back to my presets, find the copper material and replace it. This will now create our copper. At any point you can now go in, so you can see the roughness has changed, the color's changed. You can change this further should you choose, so you can make the, the color darker, lighter, or whatever. I'm just going to stick with the defaults for now and add it to my end pieces. So I'll click on one there. I'll swing around over here. Shift select the other piece so I can add materials to multiple pieces at once. I'm going to right click and hold on my copper and assign material to selection. And now you can see they've gone black as well because they also now have materials assigned to them. Whilst we're here, we're just gonna quickly create some wax materials for the candles as well, before we worry about why we can't see these particularly well. We'll put in a basic light as well, just so that we can see how these should look. So let's clear our workspace. We're gonna create a new AI standard surface. We'll call it M underscore wax. And then into our presets, and I think there is a wax in here somewhere. There it is at the bottom, replace. So for some reason, it goes with pink wax. We're not going for scented candles though, so we're going to change that color to something that's just off-white, like a creamy white. So we'll change that to there. And get a bit of sort of yellowy in it. But despite making that change, you can still see that there's some pink coming from somewhere. Now at this stage, you need to start really digging into material to find out what needs changing and what changes you want to make to it. And by opening this transmission area, you can see that you've got some colors in here. And what this deals with is how light passes through it. Light can kind of get into wax a little bit. So we're gonna make some changes to this as well. And we're just gonna choose the same waxy color. And we'll also do that for the scatter as well. Although I might, yeah, we'll leave that. So we now have this color here, and I've discovered that I'm not a fan of it, so we might just take it a little bit closer to white on all counts. Yeah, that's looking much nicer. So once you've got a wax color that you are happy with, bang it on the candles. So I'm going to select that candle there, shift select the other one, and then right click and hold assign material to selection right so that we can actually see how this should look because at the moment we're kind of flying blind with these coming up as black or gray this is not really helpful to us so we're going to add in just a placeholder light the thing that these materials are lacking to be able to work at the moment is a light and then we can render them properly so we're just going to minimize our hypershade for a second we're going to go into our make sure in your modeling menu although i don't think it matters yeah it doesn't matter so we'll go into our modeling menu. There's Arnold here, because we're dealing with Arnold stuff, Arnold rendering. So we'll open that. There's a light section, and we're just going to throw in a physical sky. It won't do much. It'll put a big black dome outside your scene. Now that we've added our light to the scene, we should now be able to render it. The way that I would do this is just by changing our renderer here to Arnold. When you do that, this window here should pop up and then you can just click on play to start the rendering. At this stage, you'll get an idea 
of how your materials are starting to come together. So we can see that we've got some metallicness going on here. We've also got metallic happening on our candlestick holders and the wax material is showing up as well. If for some reason this method of rendering doesn't work for you, this is called Arnold IPR rendering and we'll get onto what that is a little bit more later. But if that doesn't work for you, just go to Arnold and click on render and that will open a separate window and you'll get an idea of how it's looking. We will be coming back to rendering later in the tutorial though, so don't worry about it too much for now. What we are going to worry about is creating a glass material which we'll do in the next step. So let's go and do that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.